Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about beginner astronomy equipment and quite commonly people are recommended either a Dobsonian telescope or a pair of binoculars when they're starting out and you can get this advice from forums, from your local astronomy club and it's, uh, those two items are very commonly recommended. Now for me I feel the answer to which way you should go is really clear cut because a pair of binoculars, you can just keep them in a drawer, grab them, have a quick look between the clouds of some of the wider objects like star clusters, asterisms and constellations, whereas a telescope can is a bit more powerful on average and can really punch you in for closer looks of the planets, craters on the moon, things like that, and it will, they will usually have larger apertures, apertures to capture more light and show you faint deep sky objects, but they require more setting up. So which path you take out of those two seems pretty clear cut to me. Um, but what if you compare another common telescope, which is becoming increasingly more common, I think, to a pair of binoculars, and that's the, the mini Dobsonian, which, if we have a look, isn't a million miles bigger than a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars, and it's probably no bigger than a pair of 15 by 70s. So which way do you go then? Well, this is what this video is going to hopefully help with, because that's a bit more of a tricky situation then. The, the answer isn't as clear cut. For example, the advantages of the binocular are that the eye cups fall off. No, the advantage of the binocular is that you're using both your eyes and each eye is a detector to the brain. So you're actually getting about 1.4 times a signal compared to using one eye. So in effect, this 50 mil objective acts as a 70 mil objective lens because I'm using two of them to give information to my brain. And just like with astrophotographers where they stack images to bring out signal and reduce noise, the same kind of thing happens with your eyes. Like the, the left eye is basically stacking on the right eye, right eye stacking on the left eye. So you're stacking two images, which helps improve the image you see, and because you're using two eyes, it's more of an immersive experience, more sort of like encompassing. You're not closing one eye, squinting, and getting that mono look. You're getting more of a 3D effect, especially with Poro, Poro prism binoculars. They, they seem to have a kind of false pseudo 3D effect. So yeah, can be very nice, but very limited in what they can show you because um, you can get zoom binoculars, which will zoom you in, but they're very, they're very iffy. Like the, the the quality is quite poor. They don't hold collimation. The field of view is relatively narrow, and the quality tends to be just pretty bad. So I'd avoid zoom binoculars and go for a fixed magnification. But in which case you're stuck with that magnification, and that's where the mini Dobsonian comes in because if I pop a 32mm eyepiece in the focuser I can get a 4 degree field of view with this that's only slightly less than the 5 degree field of view with this pair of binoculars so you're still getting a really wide low power binocular-esque view but only using one eye that is the, that's a downside. But this has the flexibility in that you can put more powerful eyepieces in. You can go up to, up to, well, you could probably go up to about 80 or 100 times with this. And that will allow you to sort of punch in closer to smaller objects like the planets, craters on the moons. You might actually pick up more detail, like you'll be able to see the little ring around Saturn and you'll be able, as well as seeing the moons, the Jovian moons orbiting Jupiter, you'll be able to see evidence of the weather belts on Jupiter on a larger disk compared to the tiny disk you'll see through a pair of binoculars. And because this has got a 100 mil mirror, it's capturing more light and therefore it's going to show fainter deep sky objects more clearly. And some binoculars you can actually attach filters to, but not all of them. 
but it's quite common practice to be able to screw a, for example, a moon filter, light pollution filter, ultra high contrast filter to the bottom of an eyepiece before you pop it in the focuser. Plus, this adds a finder scope. So even, a, even though it has a slightly narrower field of view than the binoculars, the zero magnification red dot finder projects a red dot which you can use to star hop and find objects with. So this is just as easy to, and quick to set up, I feel, as the pair of binoculars. But all you need is a garden table to plonk it on, because you'll see it's on this swivel base known as a Dobsonian base, where it swivels left, right, and up and down, or azimuth and altitude, also known as an out azimuth mount. Now, the binoculars can be tricky to hold still, and that is a bit of a downside. And I don't really, a lot, I mean, I've heard people suggest binoculars to kids, and if I was to do so, I'd recommend a very low magnification, which is gonna be easier to hand hold without the, the stars sort of shaking about. I'd, I'd recommend something like an eight by 32 or 42. I wouldn't recommend anything as big as a 10 by 50. I think for an adult these are fine to hand hold but even then you do have to practice holding them still enough for the image not to jump about. The mini Dobsonians on such a sturdy base you don't need to worry about that but there is a technique you can use with these to sort of help with keeping things steady and I'll show you. First of all put the strap on because you don't want to drop your optics and then if you cup your binoculars like so, like that. You can use your thumbs in the edges of your eyes to keep out stray light and form a triangle with your elbows. Am I on screen? Yeah. And then you can just tilt up with your elbows and that'll keep them nice and steady. And that's, you. if you give that a go, you'll find it's quite comfortable. But still, Hand-holding binoculars isn't as comfortable as looking down into the focuser of a Dobsonian. I feel that as a better sort of like uh, longevity for the nights observing. This pair of binoculars I feel is better for a quick look unless you undo the cap at the front to, to reveal a quarter inch thread which you can then attach an L bracket to, coming down from there, and then attach it to a photographic tripod. And then you can use that tripod to keep the binoculars steady. The downside being your legs, when you're looking up for a, a tripod below you, your legs get tangled up with the tripod's legs. And you can get a bit of neck ache from craning up, which you don't get when you're looking down into the focuser of the Dobsonian down there. So from a comfort point of view, I do think the mini tabletop Dobsonian is a better option. These have more of a immersive feel with the, using both eyes. I do feel it's a little bit more tricky for kids using two eyes because they've got to adjust the dioptra to match one eye to the other. Kids really do tend to like that wow factor of seeing like dynamic things like the weather on Jupiter, the phases of Venus, those rifts and valleys on the moon. And a, a pair of Andal binoculars isn't gonna punch you in close enough to see that. So for, specifically for kids, I'd recommend a tabletop Dobsonian or a refractor over a pair of binoculars or a Maxitoff even. Uh, but adults, I think it just depends what you want. These are actually a great accompaniment to a large telescope as well. But if you've got to choose one or the other, I feel like the telescope's got more longevity because it's more versatile. Anyway, not to put binoculars down, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind another big pair of binoculars. I've owned them up to, uh, what's my largest pair? Well, I had a pair of Helios Apollo 28 by 110s. They were massive. Yeah, really difficult to mount though. I've had the Vixen BT81 binocular telescope as well in the past but I feel a good compromise is something like a 15 by 70 for astronomy and then have it on a, a tripod. I think that's actually a good compromise between the mini tabletop telescope and a handheld pair of binoculars like these 10 by 50s. Right, have I missed anything that I meant to say? 
I don't know, but yeah, probably have. You can let me know down in the comments, can't you, if I've got anything obvious. But otherwise, as always, thanks so much for watching and a massive thank you to my patrons and channel members for the support you give. That's just brilliant. Just, I can never get over that. And I hope people consider subscribing if they've not done so before. Give me a like and hit that bell notification so they get notified of videos when I upload them. And wishing everyone clear skies. Cool. Catch you later.